Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm going to make a horizontal sander, something that I made many, many years ago. Today I'm going to revisit it, but I've got a little bit of a twist, so you may want to stick around. A few years ago, I purchased this oscillating belt sander, but it also has a variety of cylinders with it, which makes it really handy, but it works really well. And I like the fact that it's horizontal. But before this, I used my own belt sander, and that's what I'm going to make today. So what I'm going to start off with today is my old 3-inch belt sander that I've had for oh goodness, 30, 25, 30 years, I think, a long time. And I've just got some scrap wood, some, a piece of painted plywood, uh, and something that I'm going to use as a platen. So the first thing we're going to do is attach this on here, and then we'll attach the sander. Now I've already marked my piece, and I've put a clamp on here so that it doesn't move around on me. And I'm just using these big flathead screws on the back to hold this piece of plywood on. Now if you don't own a belt sander, this is a 3 inch belt sander and there's nothing particularly special about them except <laughs> they can take down material very quickly on you so you do have to be careful with them. Now this one, if you look closely you'll notice that there's some holes in the top here. These are bolt holes, quarter inch bolt holes and they're for a variety of reasons but we're going to use it today to attach it to the frame that I'm just making. Now there's not many adjustments, in fact there's really only one adjustment on most sanders and this is to the, the tracking for the belt. So this little knob here can turn, I'm not going to turn it because I've already set it up, but if you turn it one way or the other it allows the belt to track back and forth. And the reason that that's important is I want my belt sander to sit as close to this platen as I can, but because I don't want the belt to be rubbing on it, I'm going to use a piece of plywood to just lift it up just a tiny bit, and that means I'll have a little bit of clearance there, and if I want I can put another board on top of that if I need to get uh, a little bit higher up. So now the next thing is how do we determine where the holes are? Well there's a couple things. You can put some bolts in there and sharpen the end of them, but I just happen to have a hanger bolt, which you've seen me use these before. It's a screw on one side and a bolt on the other, and I'm just going to screw it into place like that, as deep as I can, and now when I turn that over and push that against the board, it will leave an indentation. I just need to make sure I line it up. It will leave an indentation. Now I need to put one in the other side and then I'll get two indentations and I can just drill a hole right from that. And that one there. There we go. Okay. Now we'll just drill some holes in there. Some of you will notice that although it sits flat up here, you'll notice that there's a big gap here. And I don't really like that big gap, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a filler in here. So there's the piece I just cut. Uh, I just want to see if that's the right... Yeah, that works. That'll work just perfect in there. One of the bolts I have is too long, so I'm just going to cut it off with my Dremel tool. Now those bolts aren't going to be able to support that sander lifted up like that. So I'm going to, I cut a little piece of the block that I put underneath there and I'm just going to put a couple of nails in there just to stop it from moving around. Okay, there's our sander, nice and firm on there, and you can see the belt is just off our platen here, and I still may need to adjust this a little bit uh, to get this belt to, to ride up or down a little bit, but so far it's looking good. Let's go ahead now and put it in the vise. Now that was one of the things I liked most about this horizontal sander, is when I wasn't using it, I could just store it underneath my bench, and whenever I want it, I could just stick it in my vise, and there it is, all ready to go. Now this is the final piece of the puzzle. 
Do you know what that is? It's a foot switch. And what we do is we plug the sander into it, but before we do that, what I need to do is turn the sander switch on, and I just use one of these Velcro strips because they're easy to take on and off. Nothing's plugged in yet, so I'm going to pull the trigger in and just wrap that around it, and that means the sander will be turned on all the time until I hit the foot switch. So for this tool, this is sort of the best area to be standing in because the belt is going that way and you, don't, you want the belt to be going away from you, not towards you so that it doesn't jam wood into you, but typically you'd be standing in front of it. I still love this tool. Now the one thing that you, you can make some adjustments on this for, you can see how that belt is just barely above uh, the platen that we have it sitting on. And at some point you might want to be sanding so that your wood is right flat on something, but you're going to miss sanding the bottom of it. So what you can do is just make yourself, this one's a bit thick, but it's just for demonstration. You can make yourself a separate platen to go on top of that. You can clamp it, or you could screw it down, and then you could use that to have something absolutely flat so that you get nice straight corners or nice straight sanding, uh, whatever you have, because you can lay it right flat on your own substitute platen. And when your belt gets clogged, you can use one of these erasers on it and get rid of all of that. Well, most of it anyway. You know, I see these belt sanders at swap meets and garage sales, and they're usually in pretty good shape because people don't use belt sanders a lot. Uh, so they're, they're usually pretty good shape, and they're usually very inexpensively priced, I think, anyway. Um, but just make sure, if you're looking for one, that you find one with the bolt holes on top, um, and then you can make something like this. This is a great little tool. I used one of these for years and years and years, and it was a great little tool. There will be a full article on Woodwork Web, and I'll put a link to all of the little bits and pieces that I use, so you'll have that information as well. That concludes my video for today. I'm Colin Kinnett, and thanks for watching.